Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm painting today. Guys, I'm going to paint a cross. This is something I got at my home. Where did I get this? Hobby Lobby. I got a big one. I'm going to paint the big one, but I was wanting to make something for my niece Rachel and her husband um, and Esteban and their new baby, and I had these crosses and thought, I'll give it a shot. Um, so I wanted to design, her, her baby's room is pink and gray and white. And I thought, well, there's a lot of things you could do, right? But I had this pattern, this um, flowers and dragonfly design. It's by Tombow, by Marie. It was a coloring page that you could get from the Tombow website for free. And I had downloaded it a long time and it was in my patterns file, like file you know, where I keep all my patterns. Um, so I traced it out onto tracing paper. This is that whole thing. And then I traced the cross onto a big sheet of paper. So this is some uh, graph paper that's like a big, you know, let's see, it's at least 18 inches by um, 11. I think it's 18 by 11. Anyway, the cross just fit and then I took the pattern that I had traced and just kind of started fitting different bits of this design onto the cross, how I wanted it. And I think it turned out pretty good. So then I traced this onto tracing paper. So I actually, you know, the exact pattern the way it was goes like this. Oops, and I just got it in paint. And, um, traced it onto the uh, cross just the way I wanted it because I was going to wood burn it. So I wood burned it and then today I'm going to paint it. But um, when I trace it on there I use, I think it's called, it's not graphite paper. I think it's, it might be charcoal paper. Hold on. Anyway. Um, but I do it very lightly, and then I and I only did the main lines, and then I used pencil for the rest so that I could erase it. Um, and then I burned it. And then after I'm done all the burning, and I sign my name on the back, I spray it with uh, like a matte sealer, um, just like Krylon matte spray, because uh, when I paint. I want to have, I don't want the wood to absorb the paint into the wood. So I need to have a barrier so that the paint can sit on the top of the wood. Um, and that's where we are now. So I've already gotten out. I chose, since I told you her colors are pink and gray, these are like greens, but they're in the gray family. This one's called Silver Sage Green, and this one's called Blue Gray Mist. They both look a little, this looks greener than, eh, they both look gray. They're not very green, but I'm going to see how they look. And the way I do it is I uh, just use washes or what I like to call flutes of color. Mm. I have my bucket of water here. I have palette paper, which is like a waxy paper that I can load my brush with and some, a little pile of paper towels to blot my brush off with. And I'm going to use a, let's see, this is a half inch, yeah, half inch angle brush. I'm just getting it wet, getting all the bristles kind of saturated with water, and then I blot it on paper towels. And so there's water in the bristles, just enough to get the paint moving a little bit. So I'm going to start with the darker color, and I'm going to corner load it onto the pointy part of that angle. And then I push the color into my brush back and forth, up and down on my palette paper. And what I'm trying to do is get a graduation of color from dark to medium to basically water because there's other ways you can control the paint with a mop brush and things like that. So that looks good for now. And I'm not covering a huge, let's see, I'm going to move that out of the way. So like here's a leaf. Let's just do this leaf right here. Right here. Gotta make sure I'm in the shot. I'm gonna come down a little bit 
and this is the darker color and I'm just going to put it and I don't know if my brush is wet enough because it's splitting I'm going to put it across the bottom and I like to float in a little bit of a pity pat way and I just love how the how it looks on the wood so here comes Kiwi Kiwi you getting in the shot? go ahead be a, be a movie star go ahead she abandoned ship. She got back up on my shoulder. So I'm reloading the brush. And I'm going to go over to this one. And I, you put the darkest color up against the flower. All the bristles are on the surface because I need the water as well. So in other words, there's water over here that I can push the color up into. And it floats across the water. That looks really gray. It doesn't look green at all, but that's okay. Let me take a little bit of, you know what I want to do a little, I'm going to see what this looks like anyway. I was going to do it down the um, center, just to darken the center up a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with the, uh, what is it, the shale green, silver sage green. And generally when you're painting, there would be a, a light source. Um, if you're doing a realistic piece anyway. I put the, sh the shadow on both the same side. I don't know if that's right. Like I've never taken a, a, a true course on that, but I like to do what my eye sees, like what, I, what looks nice to me. That's how I do it. This is such a close color. I, don't, I think I'm gonna have to go down a little lighter from this silver sage, but I'm gonna put this on the tips. If it's too light, I'm going to stop. I mean, I'm too too close to the same. I want it to look brighter. Mm, gosh, I don't think I have much lighter of a... Yeah, that's pretty... I'm just looking at my stash. Um, I might actually have to go into gray. Maybe I will. I'll just grab a light gray because I want it to look like maybe I can highlight it looks I'm gonna keep going with this first and I could always add a little bit of white actually to this let me just put some white out yeah the colors aren't magnificent with this they're not as popping as I like them but I'm trying to make it kind of fit into the theme of her baby's room although you know the baby's not always gonna have a pink gray and you know so maybe I should rethink. So I just added a tiny bit of white to my paint. And now it's looking, it's just looking gray though. It's not looking green. It does have a green, a little green shimmer to it. It does, it has some green. And then I'm just gonna put it right down this other center And that's it. And the, the, what I love about painting on my wood burning is there's no base coating and the actual wood grain and the wood, <clears throat> wow, my voice went weird. The wood color pokes through. So in other words, if I had base coated this green, all, I don't know. It's still good, but this is just a different vibe. And I really am, I'm really enjoying it. And it's also saving me so many steps of extra coats of paint yet I'm still enjoying the process and I do I like the way so I am just taking that color and popping it on the edges of the of the leaf I'm really running out of color before okay let me have a look I like it I think it says it's green enough because we know that leaves are green. So our eye says, yeah, that's a green leaf, even though it looks really gray. Although, you know, anyway, so that's what I'm doing today, guys. I'm going to do this. It is, let's see, it's only 89 today. We are in New Jersey, South Jersey. It is 1130 in the morning. And I do think it's supposed to, uh, I'm going to start with the light color this time. 
supposed to get a little bit hotter today. We're kind of in the middle of a mini heat wave. So this time I'm starting on this leaf, I'm going to start with the light color. And I'm a little, I was being a little sloppy there, but because I, I just take a Q-tip if I feel like I went out of lines. I know you guys can't see it, but right here I got it where I didn't want to. And I'm going to do it on this side. I need to think about what I'm going to do the, um, oops, the stems because they could be, I guess I'm just going to do them solid with um, the darker green. Answered my own question. Uh, so anyway, th the thing maybe you guys could help me with is um, going to see Rachel. Now, she had her baby in May. Mom, her mom, went to Florida to see the baby. This was in May, while New Jersey was pretty much on self-quarantine. We were, we were self-quarantining at the time. I did not go. I did not want to go. I didn't think her mommy should go, <laughs> but mommy wasn't going to stay away from her, her daughter's first baby. Um... So now, let's see, we're all the way to July. She's coming the first week of August. They were going to do a bigger thing for everyone in New Jersey who hasn't seen the baby. You know what I mean? Now, the baby's only two months old. And I don't know how, I mean, I know a lot of you guys are uh, my age. But when we were young and had our babies, we didn't bring our baby everywhere in the beginning. Like, you know, for the first couple months, maybe three months, and then whatever. This baby's been to the beach. This baby's been everywhere. Um, anywho, I'm still not sure if I'm going to go to the... Now, my brother is her dad, and he passed away in September. Um, I have his ashes that I wanted to give her, and I, I, I should show you because I wood burned a beautiful box that I'm keeping his ashes in. But she lives in Florida, so I wanted to give her the ashes and um, some things that I had for her that I was going to bring her. Anywho, I'm still debating if I should go or not because she's coming from Jacksonville. So I need you guys to help me out. Um, it's so all over the place. Like that's the thing. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get through. And I know I'm in a great position. I don't have little kids driving me nuts every day. And I, my husband's able to work from home. So we're okay when it comes to being able to move forward in a kind of a, a less going out and doing all that stuff. Like, you know, we've actually not eaten out, even in like a outdoor situation. Um, in South Jersey, it's gotten, you know, there's definitely places are opening, but it's outdoor eating. Um, we have had my brother-in-law and sister-in-law over lately. Maya's been coming over lately, but we're six foot distancing and we're not really um, spending a lot of time together um, and they're quarantining too like they're not they're working from home and they don't go out and go to big gatherings and things like that so yeah so I need your opinion I just want to hear how you've been handling this quarantine the uh, effects it's having on you if it's you know if you're starting to feel super lonely and the other thing is um, I go to Alan. I was going to Al Anon meetings, and I love Al Anon, you guys. I love it so much. Anywho, so we're meeting via Zoom. Zoom is awesome, and it's been great. And my group still are not willing to meet in person. 
Now wait, I have to focus for a second because I was doing the dark side over here. So I got to put the light over there. Um, so we're going to continue meeting via Zoom. And a lot of well, we meet at a church usually in person, and the church isn't even opening yet for um, to let us have meetings. So it's not like it's our choice <laughs> anyway. Um, so stuff like that. And then there's the whole school situation, which I think they're going to open them, and then they're going to close them right back up. And I think it's stupid that they even do it. Like they should just wait until at least Christmas break. Like just take off for one more little. You know, wait for Christmas break and um, see if the if what more information we have because there's a lot you know they're learning so much all the time because uh, I just think it all it could cause kids are too uh, you catch the cold from kids too much like they're just too contagious type people. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's my thoughts. Anyway, I I think they're just I think they're gonna do it. They're gonna open, and it's not gonna work. And they're gonna end up having to go back to teaching from home. And it's just a shame because the teachers need to. Uh oh, I forgot. I see something I forgot right here. I didn't do a vein when I was burning, and I didn't do one here either. They weren't on the pattern, but I thought they, they needed to be. So that looks pretty, you guys. I don't know if you're seeing this, but I think it's gorge. Maybe I should, I'll finish this, and then I'm going to do these flowers. I'm going to do the pink, and then I'll uh, um, let you go. Anywho, um, yeah, so that's been, that's been the hardest part for me, is that there's just no one... This is what we're doing, you know. I, I wish it was like we knew what we were doing because every state is different. New Jersey, where I live, was one of the first ones to get, like New York, New Jersey, um, Delaware, all the tri-state area was locked down first, and no one else had it, so they were just partying. Like, I remember spring break, and that's the thing. Rachel's from Florida, so she's coming from like one of the hottest spots right now. And like Maya's mom is a nurse and she left her position. She literally resigned because she has a baby. She just, she has like a, well he's, he's, I think he's one now. And every time she came home from work, she had to quarantine herself and she just didn't want to do it. it she wanted to spend time with her kid. I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't but look there's a lot of people there's a lot of things that we have to consider it's not just about you know listen it's everyone that's the whole thing about this is people want to have the right to choose they want to have the right to make their own choice about this but if it's if you're affecting other people that's what they say in Al-Anon um, what's the word uh, there's a good example of it, like, it's called, oh God, I can't think of the word. I'm going to find the word. Sorry about that. I just had to turn the camera off so I could think, and it, the word is called autonomy. So in Al-Anon, we have autonomy because everyone does things differently, but when it affects someone else, that's when it becomes a problem. So if my behavior, and they give the example of, like, if your kids want to eat dinner in their bedroom or whatever you know go ahead go eat dinner in your bedroom but if you leave crumbs and you leave a mess and bugs come and mice come and you know now you're affecting me because they're going to affect me so that's a good example but when it comes to something like this if you wear a mask or don't wear a mask or whatever I think if it affects if it could possibly affect someone else then you should take the responsibility and do what's right for the, the good of everyone. You know, not just yourself. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. I have glasses, and when you wear a mask, your um, glasses fog up a lot. But I wear a mask because, I mean, 
that's the that's what my conscience tells me to do I want to do what's right for everyone and if that that's like the best chance of um, keeping it from spreading so I want to do it that's just my take on it some people really get offended that it may be the government which I don't think it's the government right now it's it's medical professionals telling you that's what works you know they're giving you their best advice to help contain it and people get offended like don't tell me what to do or how to live but when it affects other people that's the difference Anywho, I'll get off my soapbox, but see, that's why I love al because it gives me a clear um, kind of uh, um, mission statement. You know, this is my mission. I want to be the best Sarah I can be, um, but I also want to be socially conscious, conscious and make sure that um, I'm not hurting anyone else, you know, so rights are good. But you have to be responsible, too. You can't just say, that this is my right, and then, like, you know, all, all responsibility goes out the door. It's such a mixed bag. Anywho. So, long story long, I'm not sure. Now, I think we're just going to have a small, kind of on a back deck, gathering. And... I can come and I can wear a mask, even if everyone else is not wearing masks. I can wear a mask. It's just that when I get there, I know I'll take it off. You know, like, it's just, that's my nature. Matt, I'm making a video. Okay. Um, so, that is the dilemma of... Uh, I'm easily influenced <laughs> so I have all these you know tools but yet when I get around everyone else and of course a baby oh my god I'm gonna want to see the baby so um, anywho I am thinking that I'm gonna prepare ahead of time mentally and just know that I'm going in just for a few a little bit I'm gonna bring my little gift bring her daddy there, my brother, I'm going to bring the ashes, and um, see I'm going to put the shade on this side, I don't know why, um, but that looks pretty doesn't it, I think I'll, I could put a little highlight there, but what happens when I put too much color then I, I don't get the wood kind of coming through, but that looks pretty, can you guys see that? All right, let's go in with some pink because I can always play with that more. But I have three colors of pink here. I don't really know what her tonal, I actually have seen it. It's super washy. Like her bedding and all that stuff, it's just super washed out pink. But I have to pop it up with a little. So I think I'll start with the darkest and I'm going to put it kind of everywhere things overlap. That's where you always want your darkest color so that you can... Sorry guys, I had to plug in my... I haven't filmed in a while and my battery was dead. Anywho, so I'm going to go in with the pink. And I'm going to start with this dark pink. Might as well come down. Hopefully I'll stay in the shot. And see these little pieces right here are where the petal is flipped over. Realistically, I would put dark in there too because there's shadow. All right, so let me just, this is going to be interesting because the thing is, the, the, that's why I love when other people design for you and it's um, a pattern packet and they tell you where to shade and highlight. You don't have to make all these little decisions and I can just do the painting and that's fun for me. But I'm going to have to think a little bit. That's all right. My brain can handle it. And again, the way this paint takes to the wood without being base coated underneath, it's such a cool effect. I just love it. Um, just going to stick with this for now. Now, you can tell, like this one is totally underneath these two. 
So I'm going to go around this whole thing. And I'm just loading the brush. I load the brush the same way every time. It's the same thing over and over and over. So I'm going to take the, the paint and, I'm sorry, the tip of the brush and I'm just sticking it in those and turn the brush to keep the water's edge towards the inside. You can always go back and add more color and that's why I tend to be, whoops, see I could have kept that a little lighter and just stopped it right there, but I'll put light over that. So already, let's see, you can kind of get the idea, now let's see, I think these two petals are on top of this petal. So I'm going to go around the whole thing. I'm going to want this when it's done. <laughs> no, I'm not. I am specifically painting it for, for those guys. For Esteban and Rachel. And the baby's name is Catalina. So, um, no, this is for them. And I can always do it again. Now that I have the pattern, I can do it. So it kind of looks like this is actually on top of that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make this side. So I'm going to just stick this here. and bring this down here. And then this one is on top, so. And I have three colors to play with, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna use all three. Um, on every petal. I'm just going to pop a little color here and color there when I want to. So let's see what that looks like if I just look at it. Boy, that's bright. That is really bright. I don't know. Hmm. I think it's good though because I can I can tone it down with um, hmm. I, I can't decide and see this is I'm just glad you're with me because I can't decide if this would be the darker part because see it's flipping over so it's actually the back of the petal so this is the petal flipping over on itself it's kind of and sometimes I, I think this is even lighter maybe I'll make all of those white oh boy I think that would look pretty and then under here, I think I'll make it dark, but this could be white. Or you know what? I'm not going to do it white. I should, though, because her room has white instead of this super light pink, which it. And then I'll highlight with white. Then the other color is called bubblegum pink, which I don't know that that's going to be dark enough. I'm going to put some out. This is my guinea pig flower because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm putting this out and I'm going to put this out. And guess what? It's going to look pretty no matter what. It's They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> right? I mean, if it came from China, it would be looking just as... I mean, this got to look better than... No, I'm only kidding. I don't know, but people don't pay that much attention is what I'm getting at. I think I'm... I'm you know, stressing over something, they're not, they're going to think it's fantastic, right? Hopefully, some people don't really like getting um, gifts like this, but let's see. So I'm going to put some dark color there and here. And so in other words, wherever there would be shadow, because that's flipping over. You know what I mean? That's, oops, hopefully I'm in the shot, you guys. Um, right here. 
So yeah, what a 2020 we're having. I, um, look, I'm happy to be here. Don't get me wrong. I am loving life because my brother isn't here. Some people aren't here. People are dying all the time. And coronavirus is killing people. My, my um, husband's brother, Pat, passed away this year. He just passed, um, let me think. This is July. I think it was June. He had, he was in the hospital for an esophageal cancer. He had, his cancer recurred as esophageal cancer and he had surgery. Um, this was back in like February like out in Philly and stuff like that. And then he came to Atlantic City. He lives in Atlantic City. He went to Bacharach Recover, um, Rehabilitation Center. He went to, the re to rehab. And he caught COVID. He got COVID in the hospital. But by then, he was already so weak and depleted from having surgery and cancer and treatment that his immune system was like really beat, you know, he couldn't, um, anyway, his daughter fought to get it taken off his death certificate. He ended up dying, but we feel like it was from complications of, he never got off his feeding tube. He never, you know what I mean? Like he didn't really recover from the surgery and then he got COVID Wow, that is bright, but I like it. Anywho, um, but they were adamant, and I hadn't really thought about it. I didn't think about it, but when I was talking to his daughter, um, she wanted it off the death certificate. Um, I don't, I don't know her reasons, but she had them for sure, and. So I think some of the numbers are getting a little bit heightened. If they're putting COVID on every person who dies, even if you got in a car accident and you died from your injuries, but then you had COVID, the numbers are going on, you know, I, I don't know. But that being said, it doesn't matter. The numbers don't matter. That's not what I'm looking at. It is more about the disease itself is super highly contagious. I don't want to get it. Like, I don't know that I would die from COVID, but people are getting super sick. It's really messing up their lungs and even young people. Anyway, I, you know, it's like the flu. Do you get the, I haven't gotten a flu shot, but a lot of people get a flu shot because they don't want to get the flu. So it's the same thing, right? Anywho, um, so just using common sense, listening to the medical professionals, not politics, not that it's a hoax. It's not a hoax, you guys. My granddaughter's mom is an ICU nurse. It is real. And it scared her enough that she decided she wasn't going to take the risk to get her family sick. Anyway, I don't know if that's actually what she did, but. And thank all of our nurses who are out there doing it. That looks gorgeous. I think this makes it look like a highlight. I'm going to put that light pink in here. Man, that looks so pretty. Excuse me, my coffee made me burp. Like, I, I think I will go back, let that dry, and then I'm going to go and really darken around the center again. But let's look at it with the, with the leaves. I'm going to go up. Oh, man. That's going to be so popping. <gasps> All right, I'm going to come back. Let's see. Let me add. I'm just going to add the um, that light, light yellow with a um, like a round brush. I gotta find one. Wait a minute. I really need to upgrade my brushes. I've been, um, oh, another thing. I've been, I'm, I'm an admin for the Facebook page, Innovations in Paint, let's see, Innovations in Creative Painting? Create, ugh, 
I, have, I don't even know the name of it. Anywho, um, I'm going to be doing a class-ish, you know, a, a video of, on um, a mandala, this guy. This little fall mandala. I'll probably do it on paper. Um, but, like, like, this is just, the way I'm painting on the wood is really appealing to me right now. I'm just really loving the way the wood, anyway, um, I'll use this brush. So, I'll let you know, and if you want to go over and become a member, I think it's, um, you have to be, uh, it's not public, you know? But, we're doing different things, like themes for the month, and, um... It's new to me because I've never been involved in anything like this. And Debbie Cole is the one who runs it. And she's um, really been very supportive of me and my art and my designs. So um, I'm enjoying. I'm learning a lot. And we do Zoom meetings, which is awesome. I'm getting to meet people. So hopefully, like, and that's the thing. Don't be this, this too shall pass see it's another thing that al -Anon teaches me there's so many things that could it's all in your attitude how you decide to look at it can be the total you know it can make or break you if you take a pot like even when my mom had cancer guys seriously my mom had ovarian cancer and she passed she passed from it about five years from diagnosis, which is very common. Anywho, Maya was born right around the time of her diagnosis. So it was a blessing. And Maya was a very unexpected pregnancy as well. Um, my son was very young. Anywho, so it's how you look at things. And we just enjoyed the heck out of that little girl. She's turning 13 this weekend. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Anywho, um, am I in the shot? The, uh, the point is, life hands you things, and the only, it doesn't matter, it's how you deal with it that matters. So try, and you know, have a day that's sad, and yeah, sad, you should be sad when bad things happen. That's fine. Hey, Joe, I'm mm -hmm. painting. Don't be sad. Joe's sad. You're not sad. Um, but feel your feelings in the moment. That's what al -Anon teaches me too. Don't try to numb it and don't act like, don't be in denial. And wow, I love that. Oh my God, you guys. So, um, oh, there's one more spot right here. This is green. Those are going to be green. But, so I would, I am just, I'm not worried about COVID right now. I'm in my craft room. I'm making this gorgeous thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, I have to figure out what my center. I think I'm going to use like. I'm, I was thinking of using gold or metallics because, see, I have a dragonfly. I think I'm going to use my Lemure. I have to. Look, look, man. I have my Lemure paints. And, yeah, they're not gray or pink. But I'm going to do it with this. I'm going to go ahead and do him while I have you, too. Anywho, um... So, life is good. Embrace the good stuff. Don't deny the bad stuff, but don't dwell on it either. You know? All right. I could do washes. Like, this is wing. This, I think I'm going to do the whole body. Let me get my really small angle brush. It's not that small, and I can still add too much paint. Um, did I throw it out? Yeah, my brushes are looking rough. I need to replace some of them. Um, and I, I think I'm going to get some kind of better brushes, per se, like ones that are... See, I don't have... I don't have it. I think I put it in my beet brush pile. 
Anyway, I'm just going to use this one then. I just have to load it gently. I can't go in full steam ahead the way I always do. All right, so I'm going to come in. And I'm going to do this little dragonfly body in this metallic Lemure. It's called Metallic Olive Green. And I'm doing it the same exact way. I'm just corner loading the brush. And I'm going to go... I might still just fill it in because I think a metallic has the shimmery effects that you don't you can fill it in and it'll still give you um depth because it's a metallic it has um you know what i mean like it if you turn the piece it's going to shine I don't know. I think I need to fill it in. Am I in the shot? It's just a wash. Sorry, the FedEx truck went by. Actually, I think I'm going to paint that in more solid because it's just looking mushy. It doesn't look good. I'm going to do it with this. This is just a, it's going to be a little more solid to get the full, and then I can always shade it with like oh, soft black or something. I think that's what I need to do. And these are all the decisions that when you get a pattern packet by um, someone who designs the piece and chooses the colors that you don't have to think about. But because I'm starting to design now, and this was just a coloring page, so anything, I can do whatever I want. But, um, you know, to make it look realistic, it, there is something to that, you know. Um, like, again, it's not for, it's a gift. It's not like I have have to worry about it being judged too harshly it's just it's for my grand my grand niece my son's first grandchild so let's see I'll come out I think that goes it's good enough because that's the centerpiece man I I don't know I like it and then I thought I was thinking of using like like I said around here maybe some gold I'm getting way out of um, the color zone of what I had initially chosen, right? All right, so I'm going to go away and get this all done so you can see it. Um, but I have to figure out what I'm going to do for the centers. I'm, I'm just going to have to add um, another color. I, I don't think white because I just, I don't think there's, I mean, I could do it like a, maybe not white but like a, a vanilla or a buttermilk no because it's white her room is white all right I'll decide and I'll be back all right let's see what can I tell you um the flowers I darkened a little bit more I went in with some Mendocino red um just like and the the white dots are not dry yet so I don't want to touch them too hard but like, I think I, I don't think I put it in one place right here on this bud. So I'm going to put it because I'm still finding little areas like this is, I could go back and forth and back and forth. I just don't want to touch the white, but I want to get it dark in there. And then you know what else? I want to paint the little inner bud area really dark too. Um, so yeah, so I did that. I ended up shading the dragonfly with this pewter, which is a, another one of the metallic colors. First I used soft black, 
which is also I use soft black on the darkest parts of the leaves like right up against the flowers I put a little soft black but I didn't really put it on the leaves if they weren't like under something I only used it where they were under something or overlapping I put a little soft black like I think let me see um, and then on the dragonfly it didn't look right because the soft black is a flat color I used the pewter which is like a metallic black and that I think did the trick like it made the it makes the um, the wings look separated especially when it like see right there and then I did add white to the wings too to kind of just pop those edges where was I gonna put this right here and I think I might have put it but I'm just gonna put it yeah I don't think I did have it there so yeah like I didn't put it on all the leaves which I think is good because I didn't want it to just be on the leaf if it didn't go under something or overlap but like here and here um, where it was under here and that's it so I didn't do too much when I went to do the dragonfly I just didn't think it looked right it kind of took away from all the shine I did his little arms with the blue whatever that's called let's see that's such a beautiful color pearlescent turquoise and then I did end up putting that on his body too just on the tips to highlight it because it was kind of I was losing his body and the see how it got lost right there then when you tip it up it kind of comes back um, oh for the centers which I might go back and do a little bit darker too like just another coat but I gotta wait for the um, dip dots to dry because I, I did those with um, I just dip dotted them to fill in the holes I used a color called Sonoma wine I think now let's see candy bar brown and burnt sienna which I love they're both brownish I'm sorry reddish brown colors this is called candy bar brown yeah and burnt sienna I really that was the toughest part for me to figure out what color to do the centers with but um, I like it I think I did a good job the color cho choices were the hardest but I think she'll like it I brought the white it's not really gray but it's a gray green and the pink and I just think it's gorge I do I'm very happy with it I just ended up the stems I just did a straight um, little liner brush of the the blue gray mist so these are the colors that I used and a little bit of white added to this for the very light areas of the leaves I'm all the way up you can't see the whole thing I'm tempted to put a little bit of um, the white pearlescent on the center on the dip dots too but I really I'm gonna go to the store I gotta pick up a few things and I'm gonna come home and um, put a little bit of the which I could probably do with a brush like I don't need to dip dot it um, I don't something's bugging me right here on that uh, on the bud because I put a liner of highlight there because it was small but I don't really love it and I happen to have some bubble gum some fresh bubble gum so I'm going to really try not to touch my um, I just didn't like the way the liner looked I'm gonna I'm gonna see uh, I think I like that better but yeah guys that's it so um, I hope you know what else I'm the one other thing I might do is emboss the sides with um, I have gold silver probably a silver um, embossing powder I think I'm gonna paint it first with um, just a silver paint like not maybe a gray just a gray paint maybe I'll just use the um, the green actually and then just put silver embossing over it I think that would finish it off really pretty since I didn't burn the edges 
I am really pleased with this. I am really happy with it. Yeah, I can't, I can't resist. I'm going to, the dip dots look dry enough. I'm going to be super careful, but I'm just going to darken up one more coat of this. It's called um, or Candy Bar. Candy Bar Brown. It's like a reddish, a dark reddish brown. And I'm going to carefully pity pat it on just the like kind of left side of the center. Yeah, I think that I think that looks better. Can you see the difference? Look how deep and dark, like that gives it more of a rounded thing. This is a little too light. So I'm going to do that one more time and probably just leave the side as a highlight. I'm not worried about that. The center isn't really the main attraction, but I, I do like the color choice that I just did. I don't want to put my hand in the dots. Ooh, had a lot of paint on there, but that's okay. Oh, I don't want to... See, I should really wait till the dip dots are really dry. They are, because I have a fan on. They're drying super quick. Yeah, that looks better. Oh, it's really coming, it's really showing up nice on camera too. And like I said, this is a pattern by Tombow that I got from, I have these little workbooks that I had. Tombow or a marker, they're a, a water-based marker that you can watercolor with. And there was, there was a book that I found one time, like little magazine size books that um, had different techniques you could do with the markers. And in there had uh, the website where you can go to get um, printables, like coloring book pages. So I, and I, of course I love dragonflies, and to me this can represent my brother. I, I do believe that critters visit us. It was so crazy. When I went to get Richie's ashes, um, we were sitting on the back deck and there was a butterfly that just stayed the whole time. It was like a monarch color. It was yellow and black and he, it just kept staying there the whole time I was there getting the ashes. And I, so I personally love that because I'm, I'm starting to, uh, gain some more, um, I want to feel spirit with me because as we get older, I think it's important to know that you're part of a bigger it's not all about me and after me time goes on and after Richie time will go on and he has a granddaughter now and it's very cool in that way that you can just I don't know I it makes me feel good to think that so uh oh I probably had my hand right on the yeah those dip dots dried pretty fast and did I do this already I don't think I did. All right, I'm going to do it one more time. I don't know. If I didn't, it's okay because if I did, because uh, this is where the dragonfly is overlapping, and I really want that to be set back. I love it. So happy with this piece. All right, you guys, I got to stop. This is. Um, I can show you too the uh, the box that I made for Richie, Richie's Ashes. I'm keeping it because Rachel showed me a little urn that she's going to get. But I, OMG, I'm in love with this. Now, do I want to, I am going to take a dip dotting tool. Where is it? I'm just going to take this and see what it looks like. Yeah, I have a little bit of that. I'm going to put a little more out because you, when you do dip dots, you really need your paint to be nice and wet and um, not too firm. You don't want it to be, you know, it has to level out and round itself off. So let's see what this will look like. I can even just do it as 
um, an accent, like I don't have to put it on all of the dots. I also have to go, I'm going to run, I'm just getting a few groceries, but I think I'm going to stop at Michael's <laughs> while I still can because if it ever closes. Anyway, I need more varnish. So, oh my God, I'm going to come in close. It looks so cool. It just adds to the dimension. Yeah, I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to do a few. I can really get carried away when I do this stuff because oh, it makes me so happy. I love, um, especially when it's shiny. Oh, God, it makes me so happy, guys. This is kind of a technique that, um, what is her name? Oh, gosh. She's a mandala artist that does dotting. She does dot mandalas. Oh, I, her name is just out of my head, but she often will double and evil, even triple dot with metallics on top um, to add dimension and... Um, another round of color so she'll even put different colors this is a monotone way to go um, it's white but it almost looks it definitely looks silver the metallic white I'm running out of paint oh man guys this makes me so happy I am thrilled with this piece you know when I have a pattern like this and I don't have any colors that I, you know, I mean, it's kind of hit and miss. Like, I was really nervous when I did the center, but I think it looks great. I think it ties into the background in a way that I kind of needed to do because that's kind of um, part of the design when I do it because it's wood burning. It's not just um, painted. You know, I am, I don't want it to be only about the painting. I, I want to include the fact that it is um, also wood burned. And because I did the background with the stippling technique in the wood burning, um, that's really obvious with this piece. It's not always as obvious. So I'm really glad that the... Um, the center of the flower I decided because I was thinking I could go super light as well see how I get carried away I really don't need another I'm gonna put it right there anywho wow I am very pleased about that um, and then it's just a matter of me looking around and seeing if anything is calling its attention to me, I think I've done it. I don't want to keep going because that's always, that's why mixed media is so hard for me because I don't know when to stop. You know, I mean, I could do line work on here. I could add lines of vein lines to the dragonfly wings, to the leaves, um, even to the petals. Petals have liney, you know, little veins in them as well. But I think for what it is, I gave him little eyes. I put little eyes on him. Can't really see them. I could highlight them because they're super soft, but I don't need to. Um, I'm going to call it done. I might play with the dragonfly a little bit more. And like I said, I think I'm going to, um, I'll paint the sides. I'm going to go to the store and I'll do it later because I am tired. I've been sitting here a while. I'll go walk around a little bit and come back and I'll paint the sides with this little, this one. Silver sage green probably. And then, um... I think I'm going to emboss kind of like I've done on like these art dolls let me move this out of the way so I don't muck it up like 
I don't know I don't think I'll put a pattern but see this is embossing so I could paint it and then I could actually put a little pattern on the side um, like I did here this is embossing but for this one I kind of let's see I'm trying to see if I have something that I did a solid embossing I think one of my houses I have these little houses that I did um, where are they guys I have done so many projects I can't even hold on I think okay nope this actually is in let's see no this isn't it either I just did the same thing. I embossed with a, probably with a clear embossing powder and then I put metallic rubs on there. I think this is embossed with, or it's a putty through a stencil. But yeah, I just did the same type of embossing um, with metallic rubs. Like this is, yeah, I think this is probably um, either embossing powder it could be embossing powder because I probably put um, the sticky ink through a stencil, you know, stencil, um, what's it called, embossing ink through a stencil and then sprinkled the, the embossing powder on and it came out in the shape of stars. And then I just rubbed uh, metallic rubs on there. But anywho, um, I, I will post this on my, my Serenity Crafts Facebook page. Um, but I'm so happy with this. I want one now. <laughs> so, well, I have the pattern. And this um, cross is available. I have another one. I have a smaller one. And I may attempt to do my own design on here. So it won't be as intricate. Although I could probably draw flowers just as well as these are. I just didn't want to. I wanted to just get it on there quickly. Um, you know, and I could probably put a bug on here or something too, um, because this is a little bit smaller, but anywho, thank you guys so much for taking the, coming along with me. OMG, I really like it. I'm just, I'm sorry. I love it. All right. Thanks for watching.